Can you view my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so, so what did I do last time? So last time we started with some properties of open subsets of Rn. So, which mean, namely, these are these things, arbitrary union of open set is open, finite intersection of open set is open, and then whole, whole of Rn is open, and empty set, we, we assume this to be open. Okay, so why do we consider these things? Because these four properties constitute some things called topology for more general sets, right? So when you have some things, something is there already uh, in, 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 a, in a nice space like Euclidean space, Rn, and you want to generalize those things into some other space, for example, in different sets. So here, the notion of pin set, you want to generalize it to different, in, into case of different sets, which are not necessarily RN. So that's why we needed this, we needed to figure out the properties which will play an important role. So these are four properties which, which plays very important role. And here is it. So, so the definition of topology on a set, you look at a collection of, uh, collection of sets subsets look at a collection of subsets with the following properties full space is in this set in the collection empty set is in this collection arbitrary union of members of this collection is inside this collection finite intersection of the members of those that collection is again inside this connection collection so this is the repetition or, or just generalization of those these properties to more general set. And this collection is called a topology and, 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 and the set X along with the topology is called a topological space. And the members of topology are called open sets, all right? For example, Rn with the standard topology as we, we discussed the open subsets. This is this is the this is a topological space. So similarly, one can so one can give different topology in to, to Rn. So consider this this set, this collection tau, which is collection of U such that complement is finite and you take the union with the empty set. All right, so this this again is a, is a topological space. So what, what point here is the notion of open sets depends on the space X and the topology. So here it is, the open sets are different. Ah, uh, sir. Yes. Uh, so I have a problem with the example one, like uh, you said. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sure. What is the problem? Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, the problem is uh, like Rn comma tau d. It said that it's a topological space where uh, the, uh, tau d is a standard topology. Mm -hmm. There is the distance. Now, uh, yeah. I don't understand yeah. how can a distance, like uh, as far as I understand, metric is a distance fun is a function which satisfies three properties. So how can a metric become mm -hmm. a topology? Like a to a topology as we defined above is a collection of sets, right? Like tau oh. as we defined above is a collection of sets, but the metric right. function is a function which satisfies mm -hmm. certain properties. So how can a collection of okay. set and a function, uh, I mean, be similar or equalized? I don't understand what oh, so you mean by R n comma tau d is a topological space. Mm, right, right. I, point, I, I got your question. So. So you need you need to find this collection, right? I did not make it precise. Can you can you guess what will be this connection collection of uh, collection of sets? Collection of finite. So area. this is collection of, collection of subsets of Rn, right? 
right? A uh, collection of uh, union of open borders. Collection of collection of what? The Taudi should be like a uh, union of uh, open balls in Ireland. Right? Oh uh, no, the Taudi is a collection of states. It's not an union. Collection of states. It should be the set of open ah, sets. That is correct. So that is why I, I wrote here, right? Arbitrary union of open sets, open, finite intersection of open set is open. RN is an open set, empty set is also open. So here from D, the usual distance D, what you get is the notion of open sets as we defined. Now you consider tau D is the collection of all open sets. That gives you topology. So, so, so tau here, D is a set of all open sets in RN. Yes. But then how how uh, how does that connect to the metric function? So the the function D is the standard metric, right? Standard topology mm -hmm. coming from the usual distance. So usual distance is the standard distance. So D is nothing but D x y is norm of x minus y, right? Mm -hmm. So, so this gives you the open sets, right? This is how you define the open subset of Rn, right? Using this one, isn't it? Oh, okay. So uh, you, you oh, define okay. a neighborhood, an open ball, interior point, and an open mm -hmm. set, right? So open mm -hmm. set is defined in, in terms of D. And then once you get all the open sets, then if you look at all collection of open sets, that is your tau D. But here, while defining topology, we are we are working upside down because you don't have, don't have the concept of epsilon neighborhood, or epsilon ball in a general set X, right? So you need to work upside down. So you need to make a give a collection of sets. And you have to announce them to be an open set. And this this so is so basically where in hindsight four properties. Yeah. So in hindsight, we have uh, a distance, and uh, no, we don't have of open sets using here. this distance. Ah, right. Here we are making open sets in using the distance. And that open set satisfies the, all the properties, all the four properties here, right? Okay, so that says and induces a topology. Okay, I got it. Okay. That gives it a, a topology. But in a general set X, you don't have the notion of distance. You don't have the notion of epsilon ball. You don't have the notion of interior point. So there you need to give a collection and you have to announce those to be open. And that is how we are doing, right? Okay. Uh, so any metric will generate a topological space, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, any metric space, you D, D can not be the standard one. Uh, you can take any distance, it will generate a topological space. It will, it will have notion of epsilon neighborhood, notion of open sets, and collection of open sets gives you topology there. All right. So you'll see more about this general topology in your, in your course next semester. But yeah, you think of think this more as you is the definition. It takes a little bit of time to appreciate because we we, we are habituated with the notion of epsilon neighborhood, notion of balls. And suddenly here we are doing upside down. Why would one consider this set, announce those things in open sets? Right, so to appreciate this one, you need a little bit of time. So think of it, if you have any other question, you can ask. Okay, so the next one we, we did is uh, the notion of subspace topology. So, what 
so if you have rn with the the standard distance d it's of course a matrix space and if you look at the same distance and restrict it to a subset of rn so this can be any subset of rn i have taken here in this case a sphere but it can be any subset so subset so when you restrict d that will also form a matrix space so both of them will have their own open sets because d will be matrix for, for both of them and so the question is what is the relation between the open sets here and open sets here so here we will get generally open set of a subset is 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 intersection of some open set of rn intersection with this subset okay so did i mention i didn't mention let me mention it so here so this this could be a nice exercise exercise yeah right an open subset a subset let's say a subset subset u of s01 is open in s01 if and only if there exist an open subset v of rn such that u is v intersection s01 okay so try to prove that it's very simple it's not complicated so this actually characterizes this actually characterizes the open subsets of a subset of rn or of a subspace subspace topology so this one with with the distance here well this distance again gives you uh, a topology so that topology is called subspace topology of rn so try this exercise and and yeah let me know if if there is any problem so next what uh, we, we did is compact subsets of rn so so what you need to define compact set is so compact set is a generalization of finite set and somehow somehow after finitely many steps you can capture the whole thing so here it is a collection of open subsets u alpha alpha is an in, alpha belongs to an index set is called an open cover of a set k if k is subset of union of u alpha right an open cover u alpha alpha belongs to the index set lambda e of k is said to have a finite sub cover if there exist a finitely there exist finitely many open members from this collection such that k lies in the union so yeah here we, we made a little bit confusion since k was the subset you can put m here and here also and put in right and then a, com a subset k of rn is said to be compact if every open cover of k has finite sub cover well this is looks like little abstract uh, but once we characterize the compact subset then you will see it's not uh, that abstract well we, we proved that any finite subset of rn is compact so i mean look at a finite subset and look at the open set which contains this each of the point and you look at those those open sets this gives you a finite cover 
Well, similarly, so, so a little bit of extension of finite set is a convergent sequence with, with a limit point that is also a compact subset. So you consider an open subset which contains the point zero and you will see uh, except finitely many all will lie on that open subset by definition of limit point. Similar thing done, done here. So where is the generalization? Any sequence, any convergent sequence with the limit point is a compact set in Rn. All right. So well, that, that, we did, that we proved last time. OK, so in, in, in the first year, second year course, you have seen that closed interval in R is compact, the Heinborn theorem. So we were trying to prove the product of this and n product of these sets are compact in Rn. So that is where we, that is where we, we uh, got stuck. So before going into uh, uh, proving that one, so let me uh, uh, give few properties properties of compact subsets. One, this is a very important property, a compact subset of Rn, actually it's true in general, compact subset of Rn is closed. Much more generality, not just in Rn, but since we are working with Rn, we put it Rn. So, but it's true actually for, uh, in much more generality. Yeah, can you give uh, proof? Let's look at a picture. So here it is. You have a compact subset. Right? Right. You have a compact subset K and you want to prove K is closed. Right? So what are the characterizations of closed sets? Contains all its limits points. Contains all its limit points, right? Uh, what is the definition? Uh, its complement is open. Right, 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 right. Its complement is open. Okay, fine. So let's look at uh, the complement. Take a point here. X naught. Right. And what you want to do, you, you look at any point here, x, so call it, call it x. Now, is it possible to find two neighborhoods such that this one and this one whose intersection is empty? Yes. <clears throat> yes. All right. All right. That is fine. Okay. So, so what you do? You look at such neighborhoods, right? So take change a very x and look at a neighborhood. Uh, let me put, use different color. And so here also get you here it might be different here in some case like like this, right? right? 
for each point you consider this for each point you consider that all right For each point, you consider those things. Never rules. And here also you will get correspondingly such never rules. All right. Now, what do you want to do? So, what what I did? What I did? So, for each point x, so x not which does not belong to k and take x in k there exists a neighborhood ux and ux of x x and v So Vx of x naught such that Ux intersection Vx is empty, right? It's already did, nothing else. Is it clear? So is this fine? Yes, sir. Next we come, yeah. Next we consider collection of all Ux, x is in K. Right. So call this script A. So this script A is an open cover of K. Right. Right. For every point you have a neighborhood. So every point is already there. It's fine. Now since K is compact, script A has a finite subcover. Say you x1 to x k u x m. Right? So consider the neighborhoods v vx1 vxm of x0 right define v to be intersection vxj j from 1 to n is it open set is it a neighborhood of x0 v Yes. Why? Uh, because vx1, vx2, dot vxm uh, are finite number of uh, neighborhoods of x0. And uh, yeah. they are mm -hmm. open sets. So the intersection of a uh, finite intersection of open sets gives us another open set. Right. And of course, it contains so, x0. Mm, so finite intersection of open sets is open. So since so V is open and X naught belongs to V X J for all J, therefore X naught belongs to V. Right? So this implies V is so V intersection K is empty set, right? Why? Because, because this, so let me write it precisely a little more, one more step. So B intersection U X J is empty for all J, right? One to N. Is it fine? We have chosen B X J like that. So U X J see here. Uxj intersection Vxj is open. 
So one side we take union, one side we take intersection. But you can do only when it is finitely many, and compactness give, gives us finitely many. So this implies the intersection k is empty. So this implies Rn minus k is open. Right, so B is contained. So, so this implies B containing this since X naught was chosen arbitrarily. Uh, Rn minus K is open. All right. So, compact subset is closed. Next property, so this one, yeah, first property. Second one, finite intersection property. So, this is this is this is for a collection of compact set. A collection let's say k alpha alpha from index set of compact subsets. has the property that so let me write it yeah like right. suppose a collection this of compact subsets has the property that intersection of every finite subcollection intersection of the members of every finite subcollection is non empty then intersection k alpha alpha belongs to this is non empty so is this clear? You take any finite subcollection from this, take any finite subcollection from this, and the intersection is non-empty. That is the assumption. Then you have intersection of all the members should be non-empty. Okay, so any finite subcollection of this collection has as the intersection to be non-empty, that is the assumption. And the conclusion is the intersection of every k alpha is non-empty. All right? So is the statement clear? Well, let's look at a proof. So, assume 
intersection alpha k alpha is empty. So you assume in the beginning that this is empty. And of course, we, we, we have the property that every intersection of members of every finite subcollection is non empty. So to contradict, we need to construct a finite subcollection whose intersection is empty. All right. So we assume this one. Now you consider, consider. So there will exist. So this, what does this imply? This implies that there is no, no member lies on every, every compact, right? So suppose no members, no elements of of K1 lies in every K alpha, right? So you assume that K1 is the set, which other member might have intersections among themselves, but K1 doesn't have intersection with all of them. So no member of K1 lies in every compact, all right? Now you consider the following. So consider omega alpha to be k alpha complement. So here alpha. Let's let's look, call it uh, this alpha one. Alpha not equal to alpha one. You consider that now. Okay. Now this omega alpha, this omega alpha, and you look at k alpha one complement. Well, before that, so since compact subsets of R M is closed. So K alpha complement, which is omega alpha, is open, right? So now consider script A to be omega alpha and K alpha 1, right? Alpha belongs to set and alpha not equal to alpha 1 because we have written alpha 1 there. So this A is an open cover of uh, well, 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 I don't need to do this one. You just look at this. Yeah. A is an open cover of K1. Right? So is this clear? No point of K1 lies in every other K alpha. No point of K, K, K1, K alpha 1 lies in every other K alpha. That means complements gives you an open cover. Open cover of K1. Right? Now, since, so K, not K1, K alpha 1. Since K alpha 1 is compact, script F A has finite subcover. Say omega one to omega m. So now consider now this consider the sub collection this k1 km and k alpha 1 
right? So since k k alpha one lies in omega one union union omega m, this implies R n is k alpha one complement union omega one union omega n right so this implies k1 intersection intersection km intersection k alpha 1 is empty so this is this is the contradiction to assumption all right so is this clear so this is an important property you will uh, later on also you will learn a finite sub collection empty non empty implies the whole sub collection non empty so so the nested nested intervals and excuse does me. satisfy that yes uh, how did you choose alpha 1 well, alpha 1 we choose that no elements of k alpha 1 lies in every k, k alpha. So is it possible that there is no such alpha 1? No, because this is empty now. So if you pick one, one of the member of this will not lie everywhere, right? Otherwise, the intersection will not be empty. Ah, I see. Thank you. Well, you, you can choose anybody, actually. Hmm. At least one will exist. Right? At least one will exist. So it might not be, I mean, uh, not everybody would, would work, but if, if you choose at least one, if it does not exist, then there will exist a B member, right? One member from K alpha 1, which lies on every K alpha, which means the intersection will be, I mean, that member will be lying in the intersection. And this contradicts here, right? Uh, sir. Uh, why yes. do you say there will be at least one such? Like there shouldn't uh, there be exactly one such uh, set? Because if no, there, there are k alpha one and k alpha two, uh, both of the sets which doesn't have anything common with uh, k alpha. Now let's say we remove k alpha one from the union, so we get union of all k alpha except k alpha one, which by our hypothesis shouldn't be empty, isn't it? Oh no! Here, see this one. This assumption is there, right? So this empty. So look at this picture. So it is basically what is happening is there might be more alpha uh, k alpha one. So choice of k alpha one might be more more than one. There will exist at least one. So any k alpha one will work right, sir. What what? Any k alpha one will work right. No, any any one will not work. For example, if you, I mean, there might be right. So. So, for example, if you look at uh, compact subsets in, in let's say, what kind of example would work? Uh, oh, we have yeah, something this. like this. So, look at real line, and and let's say, let's say something like, uh, yeah. So, closed interval. m to n so m n are integers right so so if you look at these things right so in this interval so m n are integers right so you might find a lot of exa uh, examples of the, lot these, of properties these collection does not satisfy the finite intersection property though. of course it will not satisfy finite intersection property what you want to show is that this is empty, means there exi there might exist more. So this existence of k alpha one is not unique. So the if point is alpha intersection property a theorem proves that this intersection is not empty. But in this case, intersection will be empty. Yeah, you are saying something. 
sir i think every k alpha will work for this like you can pick any any alpha no no that is not true see Suppose here that in, is... in this example see in this example so you you look at this alpha this this kind of interval so it's a minus 1 to 1 minus sir, not there sir but we have we have finite intersection property and this assumption that intersection is empty then then what then any k alpha we can pick i i believe no why should it work any any k alpha let's so, say suppose it's not working then uh, intersection will be non i mean non empty right yeah intersection will be non empty so that means there exists at least one k alpha which is k alpha 1 i chose which have this property how do you get to uh, how, how so do you suppose i take other? a k alpha sir like then uh, it didn't Uh, yeah, if you choose another one, so that might have intersections with, uh, with let's say, or yeah, you are right actually. Yes, yes. If it intersect with the, every of them, then it intersection will be non-empty, right? That is true. But yeah, so that will that that means that the similar thing here. Yeah, so you can choose any of them. So yeah, that is true. That is true. You you don't need finite intersection property as well, but what you need is. Uh, yeah so in fact here also we can we can take an interval uh, doesn't matter so so this this if we look at let's say k alpha k alpha 2 not every element of k alpha 2 will lie other k alphas right otherwise the intersection will be non empty the same argument so in any case one existence of one is work good enough for us so and it is not unique all right i think it's 247 so maybe we will continue next time the proof of that uh, this uh, hinborel theorem uh, let us uh, start the quiz maybe yeah okay so i'll just upload here and uh, you can start writing from 250 and by 320 you should be up i mean you should upload there all right okay then uh, see you uh, in few minutes so i'll be uploading there in uh, uh, in milan okay